university. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't read ahead for this one, but so maybe it'll just be a shorter meeting. That's fine. Yeah, I I read through catch the up on stuff and, and tie things together with other chapters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's. Uh, I'll just start. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the stuff. So yeah, that was my question starting out was, you know, function operators. How is this different than functionals and function factories? Um, so I made this little table. I think we kind of came to a consensus that this kind of accurately um, breaks down the differences between the, the three. So we've got functionals, which is in chapter nine, the required input being a function. Uh, and then the, the thing with function factories, the required output is a function. And then a function operator, required input, and, and then like a required output are functions. And then you've got the optional kind of blend of, of all three. Um, but I think that's the distinction between those three. And maybe, um, Let's see, I put down here. Uh, so, and I think you pointed this out in the, in the Slack. Um, these feel like adverbs. Like there is, so if your function is a verb, it's like doing the action. And really they can be both nouns and verbs like because they're first class objects. Um, uh, the function operators modify the behavior of the verb. So they're adverbs if we're gonna use the, the whole grammar analogy. Um, but so I was trying to think of the best way to kind of break this down and I actually went to the advanced R version uh, one <laughs> where he actually split the sections up differently. He, he based them off these three things, uh, whether they're behavioral function operators, output function operators, or input function operators. I don't think the distinction is like, you know, super important, but maybe it's a good way of trying to like categorize these things and, you know, what, what they're doing. So I think uh, behavioral function operator, the most common example and one that you pointed out in the chapter is memwise, or <laughs> I don't know how you say that, memwise? Uh, uh, yeah, so you use that to- Your baby. Uh, <laughs> to uh, prevent rerunning a function if you um, have already run that function with the same input. Um, and that can be useful. I actually use that a lot um, in stuff I do. I think it's pretty helpful. I think you have to be careful though, obviously, if it's like, reading from like a file or a URL that could change over time, um, then maybe it's not the best idea, even if it um, brings on performance enhancements. Just be. Um, so, and then the output of uh, function operators, I think these are probably the most useful, or these are the ones I most commonly use, is to manipulate the output of a function, and specifically to kind of like enhance the output. So like not only just return, if you're like returning a data frame, well, what if there's an error with it? It'll re like, per possibly will return a list with results in an error. So, uh, or I think safely actually does that. Um, so that if you do hit an error, it won't stop your whole pipeline or your script. Um, and you have, maybe you have error handling logic for it. So those, those can be really good when you're dealing with errors. <laughs> uh, then uh, input Question functions. about that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, it seems like these are kind of wrappers for the condition chapter. So are function operators condition wrappers? Does that make sense even? So I think they use those like in Arlang that they, they have like their own condition handlers that they've created. That, um, so I think they use them. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe that's a good way of saying them. I, I think they return those um, condition handlers uh, as a result, but you know, all the logic of whatever other function you're using is kind of remains the same. So yeah, I guess you could say it's a wrapper for it in, a, in a way. But it's not the like the safely thing. function, oh, sorry, Tim. I was just gonna say, it's not like the safely function contains a try catch. Like that's not what the source code looks like. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I didn't check it um, beforehand. But I think it returns those enhanced R lang um, conditional conditional handlers. I guess. Um, got it. I need to look at it more closely. Now you got me interested. Um, <laughs> it, no, it no, uh, actually, deeper down. But. Yeah. Um, and speaking of wrappers, that's uh, what partial does. It's you can use to wrap functions um, specifically to like set a default parameter. Um, 
I, th I use that kind of commonly too, specifically with those base stat functions like min and max. And you're just wanting to get rid of uh, NAs, you just set the NA, the RM equals zero. And actually, I'll go over an example like that. Uh, so I try, we're trying to come up with the uh, examples. Uh, this one, I think I got one from Colin Fay. I saw it uh, before, and I think it's kind of cool. It's, it ends up being a lot like the example Hadley showed with Chatty, which is just sending a message uh, while you're doing something else. So in this case, really, our main, the main thing we're doing here is uh, using cat, or which is like print, to print out hello world in, in uh, separate lines. But in between them, we're waiting or sleeping for a second. Um, so that's all that's doing. It looks like kind of, it really does look like a function factory. I mean, it is in a way, in this case, it's a, a function factory, uh, it's returning a function. But in this case, we've also um, uh, defined it such that it takes a function as a parameter. So it's just a slightly enhanced version of a function factory in this case. Uh, and you could do something like this for logging. I think that's a pretty useful application too. So this is one version of slowly. Um, and so then I, I had this other one twice. I don't know if you ever wanted to do something twice every time you did it. This would be a useful application of it. Uh, so it's actually, you know, it looks pretty similar, but we're just passing the dots. In this case, we're not waiting. So it's just passing it a function and returning a function and doing it twice. Um, I think that maybe the interesting thing to point out here is that when we're using per walk, um, what's passed after the function twice, um, so a wrapping cat, we're passing in set, which is passed in through the dots to the function factory that's in the function that's returned. So I don't know, just something interesting to point out. Uh, oh yeah, I did use this because I saw it on a Python website once. So I, I rewrote this in Python. Uh, just to see what it looks like. Uh, I actually really like the syntax of Python here, like where they got the, uh, the ampersand um, above the function. So here I think that we're using say instead of cat um, and it's printing out. You have to do all this, I don't know why you have to use a list and map it. If you don't use a list, it'll, it, don't, it won't actually print it out for some reason. So I think you wrap this around the list, but. I thought it would be interesting to compare the two. So with R, you have the dots, and with this, uh, do twice, you have to pass in the star args and the star star keyword args. Um, and I think I tried it without it, and it didn't work. So I think you do need that. I don't use Python every day, so maybe that's a little unnecessary in verbose. But that's kind of like Python's version of the dot dot dot. Uh, so yeah, we tried to, I figured I'd try to use the, the beers data set for this. So we do have an example here of downloading beers data and uh, where I'm using memwise uh, for caching. And uh, I guess here I'm using the, the bench package to do just a speed test to show uh, when you don't use caching, uh, just the download beers function, uh, you get 106 milliseconds as a min time. And then when you do use caching the download beers quickly, you get a much smaller time in microseconds. Um, and I think that is running it, uh, bench, benchmark is uh, running it two or three times at least. It depends on how fast your function is. So this is like a, a min and median of several iterations. Can I ask a tangent question? Yeah. Why did you use bench instead of micro benchmark? Is there, is there a reason that is like one better than the other? No, yeah, I saw micro benchmark too. I just never used bench, so I wanted to try okay. it out. Cool, uh, that's valid enough for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I'm going to use system dot time here, <laughs> so maybe it's not as <laughs> there's no logic to all this. Um, so now I've got the slow function. I think I just took this straight from um, the chapter because it illustrates a good point uh, with just uh, the caption. So here I run the slow function. It takes approximately 2 sec 0.2 seconds to run the first time. And also it takes approximately 0.2 seconds the second time. Whereas with fast function, you know, it takes approximately the same time, 0.2 seconds the first time, but then it's like near zero seconds the second time. So just another way of seeing the caching. And I don't know why I needed two examples from memoirs. I just, I think it's a really important function. I mean, he had a whole section on it, but I think it's a, it's a useful thing. Now. 
I think a lot of programming languages have some version of this package. Uh, so, and then yeah, if, even if you've changed the input since the most recent call, like so I, this first call at the top, I'm calling fast function 22, which takes like two seconds, uh, 0.2 seconds. And then I change the input to 33. That also takes 0.2 seconds because it's a new input. But uh, it remembers that I ran 22 earlier and it wasn't just the one pre right before. You see that in examples where, oh, we run it like twice, but it was, and it was a previous input. Uh, was the same beforehand, so you kind of would expect it to be twice, like super fast. But here I've changed the input in between, but it still remembers 22. So it's remembering everything in the session. How do you inspect all your cached junk in R? Uh, not sure. Does anyone, does anyone know that? Um, I'm sure there's a way. Like in the environment pane is like a simple way, but um, you might you might say cached um, next to it. I don't don't remember. Um, you could print it. I think you could just type in fast function, and without the you know like as if you're looking at the the source for it, and it would say memwised um, above it, like uh, in the source code, uh, like indicating it's a cache function. So I think that's true. Uh, I don't know if someone can try that at a console or something. Uh, but yeah, that's that's probably an easy way of doing it. Um, yeah, so uh, like I said, it remembers everything in the same session. So we ran 11, 22, and 33 in the session, and it remembers them even though for, they were from previous chunks. Uh, so that's, I think, I have four examples of behavioral uh, function operators. So we'll do input function operators. And uh, so this is kind of what I mentioned earlier with uh, using it with the base staff function. So I actually do use it like this <laughs> in real applications. So I think this is actually not a contrived example. Um, so this is actually one way of doing it, uh, where you, you write a wrapper for the function itself and hard code uh, na.rm equals true in the return function. Um, and here I'm just illustrating, uh, you know, if you take a sequence of one to 10, do the mean, min, and quantile of it and compare that to um, filling in the first value as an A, well then yes, you should get different results. So that's uh, the point of illustrating this. Uh, so I think that's not super interesting, but it's worth comparing side by side. And so the other way of doing this is maybe with per partial, where instead of, you know, inside the function, or the, the return function where I have it na.rn there, I kind of define it explicitly, like right at the top or right within partial. So maybe this is a nicer way, but um, maybe not, I don't know. You can do it either way. Uh, and it, it's able to take the, the dot, dot, dots with the arbitrary equals after, and that's like not syntax error. I think that, I think uh, in base R, if you use a list, uh, you're able to do this. And I think probably uh, partial is using a list under the hood somewhere. But um, so anyways, it's doing the same thing where I'm, you know, predefining an argument. And, uh, and if you didn't want to use partial or, you know, return like a wrapper like I did before, you can always just do it this way too. Um, but you, I think it's more typing because you have to type in the function mean uh, in your mean wrapper. And if you want to do a min wrapper, you have to type in min inside that wrapper. So I think there's a little bit more typing if you do it like this. Um, so. I don't know, just different ways of uh, doing the same thing, I think is what I thought would be interesting. Um, yeah. uh, so a second example, so I guess, or now I'm using it on the, the brewer size data set. Um, and now now this, realize, uh, but the new deplier de stuff, I think this is not the uh, most uh, approved way of doing summarize that. I think you use a cross now. I need to try some of those new functions. Um, but yeah, I'm using the mean and mean robust uh, because there's NAs in uh, one of these columns. So if you had to use the mean robust, you see down here, you know, you get actual numbers instead of NA. I'm just kind of illustrating, I guess, the same thing. All right, so output examples. Um, these are these are good. Uh, so safely, I mentioned that earlier. Safely will always return a list of to with a named list result in error. In this case, I forgot to put an S at the end of brewing materials. So I would get 
nothing as a result, and I get an error saying I couldn't uh, reach that web page. Um, but yeah, now I, you know, the second example, I've typed out the S and it's able to download it correctly and then be able to print out the first five rows. Um, so yeah, super useful for scraping. Um, you could also use possibly um, for similar purposes. It has this otherwise argument. And uh, so if you don't get the right, uh, the expected result, you can just return an empty tibble. And maybe you could have some logic afterwards to handle an empty, an empty data frame. Um, but yeah, here again, I made the mistake of not putting an S uh, at the end of uh, my, my uh, quote there is a room material. And so I got nothing back. I think in, in, in a real application, it's probably more likely something on the web page that you're, you're scraping from. There's probably something unexpected there instead of user error kind of um, typing it out wrong. But either way, it'll help you um, with whatever error. Um, and yeah, I think Safely has a, an otherwise argument as well, but I, I just find it's more natural with possibly. It could possibly will return the data frame directly if you're, you know, pulling a data frame or, you know, if it's a list, it'll return the list directly. It doesn't return it and uh, name the list. So it's, it just depends on your use case, I think, which one's more appropriate. Uh, and then quietly. So I had it, I think in the, it, I was kind of not showing this before, but yeah, I had a message for now every time it's downloaded. Uh, here, I wrap it in quietly and uh, I got, oh, this is correct. And it didn't actually print out, downloaded uh, the CSV um, like this previous one. Um, so it, uh, it just quiet your messages. You know, if you write the messages or if it's like some function in a package that always prints out something and you just get annoyed seeing it, you can use quietly for that. And uh, a different thing about this is it returns a list of four. So it has results like uh, safely did but it also prints, has output warnings and messages. Um, and so in this case, I was able to download it correctly and you take out this oops thing um, and I was able to show the first five records of the downloaded results. So yeah, it just depends on your use case. I, I, I swear I've actually used all three of these and it just, yeah, it really depends, but they're all good. I like them. Uh, so, and then now I think I wanted to just show combining a couple of them. So we had this slowly function from earlier and the download beers uh, safely function. And I'm, I'm putting a 0.1 time delay between each uh, downloading each of the five uh, data sets. You're actually, you know, I'm stupid again and typed in whoops, like I'm gonna download some uh, missing data set that's not there. So I set the names and then I'm downloading them uh, into kind of like a nested table. And because it returns a data frame in the results, assuming that there's an actual result, I'm plucking the results out just so I don't get a nested list of two with results in error. So uh, beer is, I don't know, yeah, I do show down here. It's a list of the five elements that I was trying to download. So the, the whoops element didn't uh, download anything. It, oh, didn't have anything in the results because obviously that's a data set that doesn't exist, but we can see the other four were uh, captured. So I'm just showing the dimensions of the, the data frames. Um, oh yeah, and then uh, I found an actual use case for reduce. So you could actually left join the four listed elements. So first I discard um, the empty uh, element, the first one, the whoops element, and then I left join the, the other four together. So there's an actual example of reduce. <laughs> you can have a list of data frames and you know, assuming they have some columns that, that remain the same and that those are the ones you actually want to join on, uh, you can use left join or whatever join. I don't know how that would work if you needed to be explicit with the column names of like they didn't match up and you wanted to join on specific ones for different, you know, if I have four data frames and I want to join on one key for two of them and another key for two of them, I think you just have to go plain old um, like be explicit with the and separate lines. But in this case, it kind of worked out and you know, I actually got a joined result here. Um, so yeah, I was trying to find examples uh, in the wild, as I say. Uh, like, so with function factories, like the last chapter, you know, it was brought up the scales package has just the entire thing, it's just function factories. Um, and if you can 
use ggplots uh, to scale stuff. Um, if you want to like create a custom theme or something, like creating your own color set with a scale color and scale fill um, as a wrapper for your colors, that's a pretty common thing um, to do. So I think that's like um, a real world thing that you would use it for. Uh, glue with transformers, like you're passing in um, what they call transformers into uh, different um, glue functions. So if you want to like, I think if you look at how glue SQL works, I guess maybe I'm assuming people have used glue before, but you can pass in um, even like you want to use different parameters instead of the curly braces for uh, indicating which are the variables in your strings. You can use a custom uh, transformer to do that. Uh, so I think that's a good use case of it. Um, I was kind of surprised. I was looking in the Styler and Linter packages, um, and I didn't really see much of a use case or uses of function operators. I thought for sure that they would have a lot of uses of it because those just seem like kind of like meta programming packages, and they would use kind of abstract con concepts like this. But you know, I did find a couple of them, but it's they're hard to describe here. Uh, and then, like I pointed out earlier uh, this week. I was surprised Plumber doesn't use it because it has that nice uh, ampersand kind of syntax that really looks like uh, like the Python syntax, um, but it actually doesn't. It uses R6, and I think we brought this up in one of the previous two chapters. Uh, Hadley actually recommends using R6 a lot of times, maybe in the case where you would use functionals. So it just depends. Uh, and I think there are probably a ton of other places you could find function operators and packages. Uh, I didn't scour the internet. <laughs> But yeah, I think uh, those couple packages, those are things that people probably use and probably know. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't have anything else. That was awesome. Can you link to the glue transformer in the Slack later? I'm curious, I wanna look at the specifics of that. Yeah, sure. Um, or like if there's an example of that somewhere. I don't know if you guys can see myself. Mm -hmm. okay. um, probably not in your spells. Uh, this one passes in an environment. I'm gonna just look at blue transformers. Look at me and my correct panel set. You know, I'm not confusing people here. And I also have the correct background color. Yeah, but your tiny ass font. Yeah, sorry, I should have probably. Their reactions in Zoom, love it. Where's the vomit one for your Python slide? <laughs> Python is a good language. You just, it's got to do this. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a hater. So I actually don't like the dark background here, but it's, you're passing in a transformer, this glue transformer for mm -hmm. collapsing the string of letters. Yeah, it's, it's hard Ooh. for me. That's cool. Yeah, I'm sure it's used in a ton of places. I just, just trying to find them out in the wild. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Would you? I don't know if you everyone read the chapter, but was there anything like interesting that people got out of it? Because I felt like it was kind of reading a lot of the same stuff, which is good to get the concepts again. Um, but nothing really jumped out to me. Okay. Yeah, I agree. It was a weird place to break, but maybe just having it in the prior chapter would have been too long. I don't know. I'm reading it online, so I don't know if there's like an average page count 
per chapter. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I also don't use any of these functions and probably should. So I thought these like adverb functions are new to me. So I was pretty psyched on it. Oh, okay. But well, I don't know if I would like use this terminology to call them like functional operators. Yeah, like all of chapter nine through 11, they kind of just blend in to the same thing for me. Yeah. I do, I do use and then everything else is just this returns a fun this thing creates a function. That's really all mm -hmm. I took out of it. Yeah, modifying the behavior. I think maybe the distinction with function factories is like you're really building up the logic in, in doing the function factory. Here, even with those behavioral ones I showed before, they're really just doing extra stuff like logging or sending a message, doing something twice. They're not really like changing your um, the business logic of a function. Engine. Yeah, that's sort of what I took out of it as well. Um, function operators is just anything that returns a function, but he simplified the example to just be um, like passing in a number to return a function that uses that number in the environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. As opposed to like an operator, which you pass in a function to get a function, but like it's like function factory is just anything that returns a function. Yeah. So rate limiting, I use a lot. Um, possibly safely quietly, I use a lot. Um, yeah. That's... Can I ask an application question that's probably dumb? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> possibly? I, I think I need to, can I share my screen? I think it's just easier to see it in the console. That's a Scott thing, I think. Yeah, let me Scott's stop here. This one. Okay. Can you see this? Don't talk about yeah. weird background colors. Jeez. <laughs> oh, God. So, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see. Okay. So, you have X with these numeric... Uh, vectors and then oops and then this was the one this made sense to me in the book that you can use possibly to just set that uh, otherwise argument to an A but how if at all what this is wrong how would you use quietly in to do kind of to just ignore that NA and then I was trying to think of a similarly a way to use this function and just was flailing uh, so, map it to yeah. so that should work mm. do the do the tilde in front of quietly i'm just trying i don't know if that'll work Oh, okay. That's trash. Quietly <laughs> <laughs> returns a function. So when you run that, oh. it's creating its own function. So you don't want the tilde. Um, yeah, maybe not. What if you like assign it to a variable, like do some quietly, you assign that to some quietly before and then use. This whole thing or this? Uh, it's the, yeah, the quietly. Um, not inside the. Yeah, above it, you know, like, a like line outside up. of the function, assigned yeah. quietly in to make another function. Yeah, I mean, it's doing the same thing. I don't, I'm just trying. To, I'm not sure how they would be any different. You're literally just telling me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but now you can pass it in. Oh no, that wouldn't work. No, oh, yeah, that wouldn't work. It should so, return a nested list. What? The, no, it quietly does a, does it quietly return a list. I thought it was just. The whatever the output, it all, the only thing it does is it suppresses all the side effects of printing. Or is that safely? So safely returns return uh, result in error and pos uh, and then possibly returns results message warning and error. And so quietly quiet isn't returning quietly. That's oh no, it says returns a list. Yeah, you're right. Returns a list of components of messages. Or with message and warnings. So 
So the way that I read this incorrectly was quietly wrap function instead returns a list with components. Oh, I was reading the wrong one. Just Thanks kidding. So I didn't cover that right then. I thought it didn't return a list. I didn't read the documentation. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I was under the impression that mapping over this would work and then the last one would give me like it would give me a nested list with like results and errors mm -hmm. and then the last one would not give me a result, but that is not what it quietly does. Mm -hmm. And then this one, has anyone used this function? Are you fans of it or just uh, don't I, even I don't bother? Use... I don't, I don't use that one. Like what? Like if you hit an error, it will open the source code uh, immediately. I think that was my impression of what it does. But it didn't even. But so... oh, it's at the primitive function. You, you would need like, I don't know, Oh. Okay. It might, so maybe it's because it's some, but you can't quietly ignore it. Like maybe primitives don't return a condition like the same way yeah I'm trying to think what uh, what function can we make that's not a primitive real quick by uh max well the max it's is not, just wrap the do a add do add x y or something and um uh, or add x x plus one you know just like a random constant but you got to define add What does that do with a factor? No, no, you gotta, no, add, add still has to be a function. So you could do like an inline function. Do you add? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. So now we're good, maybe. No. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, you got a result there. But not quietly. That's very loud. <laughs> I mean, it says messages and warnings. It doesn't say it's going to do anything for you with errors. X is a list right now. X. Try, uh, try the auto browse on it. Will you uh, try the auto browse add? It's not doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> That's why I don't use that one. Well, that's all I got. Um, if anyone else wants to drive. I don't know, this this chapter wasn't the, the most exciting, I think. Yeah, but I'm like a completionist and want to learn everything and the fact that I don't, can't do this is making me it's like an itch <laughs> 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 but yeah um i could throw this in the chat if anyone's like oh duh, i have a dumb example like, that'll work for this that should be easy it's like we're not yeah but i think that's it anyone else have questions comments um yeah, I'm wondering if I can use safely to tell me when, like where the error is, because sometimes I work with a lot of data sets and I want to get summary statistic for like every data set and they all have like the same variable names, but sometimes the variable types are not the same. And so it just doesn't work. And I'm wondering if like I can use safely inside of my function to just tell me like which which data frame is messing it up? Am I making sense or no? I think so. You could, well, now I'm trying to, like, maybe a map and a safely. Like, so you yeah. do safely on each of them, and then map, make sure there's, like, so you have a list of data frames. You try doing something wrapped with safely and use map. Like, like, I was using per walk and some other function operator. So instead of per walk, 
you would use a per map and you would return a list and check check the error elements of each element in the list and like discard the the ones that were um, have non null error elements that's my initial thought i don't know try it It's kind of what I did, yeah, in one of the examples. I just discarded, after I downloaded something that was, didn't have a result, I discarded that result and then did that left join with reduce. Mm -hmm. Maybe something like that where you combine it, like two or more function operators could work. Tyler, why did what you threw in the chat work with auto browse and what I was doing didn't work? I have not tested what you're doing, so I don't know. <laughs> but, That's fair. But I mean, the thing I gave you is just I mean, it's just a function. It's I don't know why Alibaz is helpful. I don't. I think what it takes you to is not a useful exit point. Yeah. Anything. Uh, yeah, I can't think of a situation where that is like the go-to for debugging. Pass. Sorry, yeah. Adley. So it, it, it gets to the browser. You, you, it seems like you're better off. Well. It opens a browser in the same spot as the error. That's what it does. I have I, someone stopped sharing screen, so I have no idea what we're looking at anymore. Share <laughs> <laughs> again. I would still use safely or possibly if more yeah. something like that. Then just check where the error happens. <laughs> yeah, I think safely would be the use, the right use for it. If you're doing like a data frame of data frames, um, I would probably use safely. You would probably use what, Tim? What do you use? Safely. Um, yeah, if you have a little reprex and want to throw that in the Slack, that could be fun to play with, Esma. Yeah, I'm actually trying to run my script and see if I can read it. Oh, cool. The proprietary work script. We can't. <laughs> uh, Tan, is there a function for rate limiting, or you have to write something? Uh, rate limit R uh, is what I use. Yeah. OK. That's good to know. Um, it actually works. It basically, you pass it a function, and it, you pass it another fun, like, and then you pass it a rate object that tells it how many times it can run within a certain number of seconds, um, and it will like automatically stop doing, like, stop and wait doing that thing um, mm -hmm. until the timer runs out, and then it continues on with whatever it was doing. So you can use it for like scraping something. Um, you hook up like. Uh, a get request, for example, um, and it will automatically like slow down to whatever the a the API's rate limit is. Mm. So you only hit it like once every however many times. Now I'm wondering what our tweet uses because I know it has capabilities for that. Um, it's probably got some function operators in there. Our tweet. I'll do something similar. Stream. Stream.r. Any other questions? Comments? So what's what's next week? Uh, Good segue. So next week, Darren is going to present on S3. There's a chapter, there's an, a short intro and then uh, chapter 12 is like an overview of all the different, what are they called, base types. Um, so Darren, that's optional if you want to cover that chapter. Uh, okay. But um, so yeah, we have a 
those three for next week. Is that good with everyone? So the intro, 12 and 13. Right. Yeah, but you're, those are like, I'm not trying to make you present <laughs> three things. No, and no, I, no. I'm, I think they're just like pretty short. Yeah. Um, yeah. The reason I didn't sign up for 12 was because it was so short. So yeah. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do 12 and 13. Well, yeah, so. yeah, it's like a slide. Okay. Perfect. If everyone's cool with that, I don't want to. Yeah. yeah, I think that works. I feel like we're going to need like more than one week on these like later chapters or maybe one week. I don't know. I don't know if it's like we would go over to make sure we all understand it and then like have a second week of like just doing random things with it. Or, yeah. Like, like in practical applications. Oh God, no. <laughs> Never mind. I forget I said that. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, but for next week, I think we have a plan. Cool. All righty. Well, thank you so much. That presentation was awesome. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.